Hello class, this tutorial follows uh, the tutorial about CSS positioning. You watch this tutorial. Why? Because this is an, an example. One of the main examples of how you can structure a page, this is a just a simple example for a simple page that can also be manipulated to make any other page look like uh, the way you want as long as you understood the concept of positioning and now you are going to look at uh, something that can uh, um, fire up your mind to, to think on how you would want your page structure to look like uh, one of the things I can advise is that you can, for example, um, get a piece of paper and a, and a pen or pencil, draw how you would want your page to look like. This is where I would want to put this, this is where I would want to put this, this is where I would want to put this. Um, and then sit down and say, so using CSS positioning, how would I do that? Okay, so let us dive into one of the many examples that I will be doing, this is the first one. We can say we have our two, two, two new files there. Um, we can maybe call this one dash example. Uh, position. Position. Position dash example. That is HTML. Then we can also we save this. We can also say position dash example then dot CSS. Okay. Position dash example. Okay. Pretending here dash example. dot css um, like that so we save you might think it is very tedious to keep on creating these pages but like i told you last time i do it because f this is what you are supposed to be doing you need to keep doing this until you are able to know how they create a page an html page structure which tags follow uh, the other otherwise you will be you will find that without the text editor you can't write this code which will be very disappointing yet you have been typing them all the time so once in a while you get a piece of paper and pen and practice without this text editor whether you would do a page like this without this text editor, or you can just go to Notepad and try it out from there. So, here we are, we can say H1, uh, we can say uh, using absolute, absolute positioning absolute positioning to to position position elements on a web page All right so uh, at this time you might not be very interested in keeping opening and refreshing and all those things you by the at this time you should be able to know if this is what i am doing then i know it is there so you just let the page load then continue later you will be able to go there if it is very necessary to check out how far things are but not all the time so i can create a container here that is going to hold the everything i am doing Then I can have one 
your page could have a header which is very important your page could also have a navigation bar which is also necessary your page also has what we call content where your content will be your page also has a, a footer since we have a header we need a footer there okay a footer there so the page has a head starts here stops there then the navigation bar where you have logos and the, the main menu and all that stuff then you have content where you have your information then you could have a footer we could also add for example a sidebar for adverts mm -hmm. we could also add a sidebar for adverts and other things so when i refresh there is nothing we are going to see because the divs are empty that is why i said we cannot keep on we cannot keep on refreshing and then all that stuff so let us see now say we can begin with the container to position it relative why because or others if you want to position them properly will be under absolute and they will be absolute or they are going to deal with absolute relative to our main container we might choose not to specify the height and width of the container since we want to use the whole page um, but we, it is necessary to put them in a certain container such that what if in case we wanted to define for example you could have a page and you want to do all of those in between here like from here maybe up to here and then up to here this is the space you want to use okay then this other space maybe you want to do some other things so you could put them in a container then define the height and width and you, your content could stop here if your width is around maybe 80 percent and then this is where you want to do some other things uh, that are not necessarily was very specific to your page say you could be running external adverts uh, that you don't want to interfere with your page others could come in as plugins so you don't want them exactly to be embedded on your page then you created the space here meaning your container could have could be covering around 80 percent of the whole web browser page or a viewport but since that is not our focus we can use the whole page as it is beginning from down here because by default how we have arranged our html this is the first element and then these elements for each other so we can say dot container container uh, we can say that position relative for now you can just do that there are other things we are going to add on now but let it be there just like that so we have also the header we have the header and then you can say background the background of the header could be purple we are going to use some flashy colors that you can be very distinct we can give it a specific height instead of using uh, when we are when we, we look at the uh, when a time comes and we are looking at the margins and padding uh, we shall talk about also what box sizing does so in case i don't want to specifically fight with box, si box sizing or maybe i even do not know about it and I am trying to use margin and padding to create space and all that stuff. I better use a specific height and say 50 pixels. But once you run box sizing and then margins and padding, it is very, very important that every time you use, especially when you specify pixels under margin or padding, it is very important you also use the CSS property 
box sizing to make sure everything else is in order and does not interfere with whatever follows or whatever elements are above it so that is our header for example and we refresh it is like this running from left to right because it is a block level element the next one here we would add say the navigation bar and we can say background of this navigation bar could be maybe golden road we can give it a height of around 45 slightly shorter than our header this is not compulsory so you can use any height you want i will show you how where you must be careful in adding up these heights such that you if in, in case you do not want overflows on your page they can still not be used because you calculated the height you were using for every container or for every element you put on a web page so when i refresh then i have my navigation bar here meaning this is where i would have the main links and the or those maybe my logos here i could be having some introductory word to my web page um, something of that sort as long as it is a header then we could have also content we can say that content that our content one should have maybe a background of light you can say maybe light green or light sea green then this content is also going to occupy maybe a height of around 800 pixels um, it is going to occupy the width we can mix it with percentages i told you a web page without a scroll bar is counted to have a width of 100 percent not necessarily a thousand pixels there is a difference there because if we change it right now to 800 pixels and then added on something of 200 pixels to assume that the page is supposed to have 1000 pixels we would still see space on the right hand side of the page so when you are using percentages yes 100 percent will work so when i say width 80 percent i whichever size of the width I am saying whichever size of the web browser I occupy my content should occupy 80% of that viewport so we could have I can refresh and you see what we are doing so far here we are at 80% and this is a width rather height of 800 pixels and a width of 80% so no matter the viewport or the size of the screen where this page is going to be viewed my content will always occupy 80%. So, next was the sidebar. Make sure the class names are very correct. If you are not very sure, come and copy it and paste it in CSS. And then simply add the dot to make it a class selector. So, we can have a sidebar, it will have strictly a width of 20% since the content is occupying uh, uh, 80% it will have a height of the same as the content such that they can move together when I am scrolling this is not compulsory you will realize that there are several sidebars on several websites you will meet that do not match the same height as the content it is still okay, but may I prefer that even if I was creating a navigation bar, I can space out my items neatly that they will always follow the content height. Um, so, we could also give it maybe the a background. We can give it um, a background of around right. We could create the right gray, right pink, or these are right colors. It's right gray, I hope we hadn't used it anywhere. There is something you will observe with a sidebar, um, and that is why 
we had to study positioning before this lecture uh, we can refresh we expected that the the side bar is simply going to take itself to the right thinking that that is where the space is yes that's where the space is but always remember that like i had said in previous tutorials there is what we call a document flow of both block level elements and inline elements all block level elements start on a fresh line that is why our sidebar could not force itself on the right hand side had we used the span tag and the next one and the content was also inside the span tag automatically our sidebar would occupy the right hand side or would occupy the right the left hand side if the sidebar is coming before the content in the html page structure you need to remember that that the document flow of these matters unless you give them specific positioning so now here our container was set to position relative we can take this sidebar to position position absolute because already our container or whatever is holding all the information on this page is set to position relative when we refresh that and then be give it its own uh, positions where it is supposed to occupy we can maybe say top here we begin with our we start with our calculations um, you can look at um, our page here um, we are saying that height of the header is 50 pixels and the height of the nav bar is also 45 pixels so it means if we want our side bar to occupy exactly where we want it to be it is it should shift from the top of the container 95 pixels 50 plus 45 the 40 of the 50 for the header the 45 for the for the navigation bar that makes it 95 please if you are watching this and you haven't uh, checked out the video about uh, css positioning you can drop this video first watch css positioning for you to understand exactly what is taking place so we set the top it should move from the top of the container by 95 pixels that should force it exactly under the navigation bar uh, then the right is zero pixels the right hand side is zero pixels because we do not want to leave any space on the right hand now we refresh our page and uh, our container is here actually three placed you could place it anywhere as long as you define this top right or bottom left or bottom right or top left wherever you want it from now even if you did not want it to occupy the the 20 percent maybe you wanted to put something else on that 20 percent that remained on the right hand side you could put it anywhere go and find out how we deal with how we deal with the our how we deal with css positioning now the what is remaining is the footer we can say footer and uh, we say background we can even say magenta okay then we can say height what height do we want 50 pixels now you have seen you might wonder what a footer is but if you are familiar with microsoft office it it has a it has both a footer it has both a footer and a header so it is that important that you have uh, 
you have them there so you can as well know where the footer is and where the the header is just like how you see in microsoft word now this footer could be expanded by using height you have seen in on several websites where you find down there as you scroll their their index page or their home page they have several other information listed on that footer so where that information is is also defined as the footer probably they gave it around 300 or 500 pixels of height it would be going far down because after all you are going to scroll down the page and then they have other information down there so this is how one way of structuring your page now i'm going to show you that you can put information anywhere uh, we can look at the for example putting information on the sidebar assuming there were adverts and all those things how do we press them there as you keep on designing you will realize your head will start asking you questions of how certain things are done so keep that in mind um, so let us look at how you can press some content for example on the sidebar check out another tutorial about z index and what z index does and what it means um, so we are going to put information inside the sidebar div tags because that is where we want to include this information if you wanted to put it on the content page or section then it would be here if it was going to the footer it would be at the footer if there were navigation links that we are now going to create we would start right away now that we are going to press content we can maybe call this news okay and then we can say maybe it was an advert of saying uh, we moved mm -hmm. we could have something else uh, we can just create a class and we call it maybe UG and then we put in a paragraph maybe that says by Uganda by Uganda build Uganda ah boo-boo this is what we call boo-boo by Uganda build Uganda now when we refresh our page by default our information will be here so we can now choose to look at if, if, a few designs of this and how you can really uh, get it out uh, to work we could uh, say because we are looking at this as a sidebar uh, we are under sidebar and then in use so let us add on some smaller design we can say dot sidebar after reaching the sidebar sidebar go to another class we call news inside there we say do the following background could be blue okay we could add a box shadow to this uh, box shadow of around 5 pixels 5 pixels left and right uh, maybe light you could say right steer there is also that color right steer um, then we could do uh, we could choose to say position relative uh, that it is relative to this such that we we apply the top left issues when we say top uh, zero pixels at the top ready to occupy the topmost and also right it should also be zero pixels when we refresh here for example this is what we are seeing now okay but we can as well float it we had to talk that talk talked about this under text and images we can say float float right okay so we refresh and there we are 
So we could have created this as a ring such that when somebody clicks here, then it takes them to another to another site that is uh, showing that information. We can reduce this a little bit and maybe also change this this shading. Mm, can give it a green and we see so now I refresh like that so if it was the link and you clicked on it then it goes to that particular uh, page now then to the to the build Uganda by Uganda I could say UG um, assuming there were many UGs maybe I could say sidebar then dot UG then on that class I say margin could say margin dash top around 70 pixels so I am forcing I am forcing uh, this word here to go under this maybe I want to add other things here that are not that but I can change this to position absolute then I add other things here or create a small container that maybe stops around here with an invisible line later then put in other things on the same space I can have many adverts when I refresh this goes back down here meaning I can add on other things and on that on that on that so this is how you can go about it get a piece of paper and pen and think of what you would want to see and how you are going to achieve that thank you